Briggs and Tech, 19 horsepower. It's leaking oil out of the fuel pump. I'll show you how. symptoms are leading toward the head gasket so we'll get that swapped out so it stops smoking. I have the engine plate removed. This is a Toro zero turn. Um, I absolutely torture this thing so I guess I'm not surprised that the head gasket blew. I got a couple hundred hours probably like between two and three hundred hours on the mower. Spent through like yeah, probably four seasons, and and when it blew, I was cutting through like two foot grass at full speed, so it was it was really bogging down. So extreme cylinder pressures, uh, that's what blew the head gasket. But I guess it's fairly common on these. But uh, hopefully it'll get swapped out, and we'll be back in business again. So it looks like with the cylinder head here, right here. So we'll have to take off the intake. The valve cover, the flywheel cover, you know, this part here. We'll have to take off the muffler. It looks like these aren't too rusty, so I'll probably spray a little blaster on them before I back them out. Bolts out here, and then uh, that should be it as far as, you know, and then the, obviously the head bolts. All right, with the air cleaner cover removed and the air cleaner removed, I just took a piece of painter's tape cover up the intake so we don't get any dirt in there and then uh, got one two these are three eighths all the pretty much all the stuff on the mower and the um, the motor are standard on this one so three eighths there's a one a quarter inch that mounts to this the snorkel and then three eighths three eighths so and I just took the dipstick out and I'll just put it back in once I pull the cover off. Uh, I'm not gonna remove the fuel pump, I'm just gonna pull the cover off and swing it out of the way. With the bolts out, I'm just gonna swing this cover out of the way. This has a like a slot to fin, fit through. So I'm just pulling it up and turning it. And you can see that this thing had uh, a lot of crap in there so we got to get that all cleaned out too that's part of covering the stuff up all right with the housing removed still intake this bracket uh, plug wire you can probably leave a spark plug in you probably should change it uh, the rest of the bolts are all three ace except for these and uh, we'll start zipping those apart all right intake pulled off bracket there is one bolt down low for the muffler for that bracket and two bolts for the muffler. These bolts are really heavy duty so it looks like it won't uh, you break the shaft off in the motor. I, if it's not rusty, real rusty, I wouldn't worry about it. You don't worry about breaking them because it looks like they're pretty heavy duty. So it looks like I'm going to end up having to take this, I guess that would be considered an exhaust manifold. but. Uh, because there's a head bolt right underneath it. So I'm gonna take that out. I'll get you the torque size here in a second. So this is a T45 Torx to get this one out. Probably should have a longer one. Uh, this is all I got, so I'll have to just kind of do it at an angle. As long as I keep it engaged, it should be all right. Recommend cleaning all this off before you open the valve cover up. You know, with a little bit of brake cleaner, or carb cleaner or something just to get all the dirt off so when you open it up it's not going inside the valve cover. All the debris cleared off here. I'm just gonna take these four 3 8 bolts out for the valve. It looks like you will have to pry this off. This was just held on by a sealant. So before you pull the heads out or the head off, I would uh, put the motor to top dead center where both rocker arms are loose. That way you're not having to put pressure you know, on the push rod when you put everything back together. So this one 
kind of naturally fell on top dead center. So we're all good there. Uh, the head, all the bolts are out. There's three, six, eight bolts holding it in. And then what I'm gonna do is just uh, give it a swift blow with a, a rubber mallet. And that should crack it loose right, right on this spot here. Here we go. spot that they fail. So we'll get this cleaned up and get that new one in there. Another thing to make note of is the push rods actually the intake and exhaust push rod are different materials. The this one's made out of aluminum and then this one's made out of steel. You can see the end where they um, go through the guides on the head both so you know which one you know goes toward the head but the aluminum one actually goes on the bottom and the steel one goes on the top all right so move the gasket it looks like I'm just gonna take my gasket scraper and just be careful not to gouge and then uh, with what's less left I'm gonna just take this little wire brush it actually cleans up the aluminum without pouring it Might even like it. I'm gonna spray this out with brake cleaner and that'll wash all the, the chips that I made out and then also make sure you just take a rag and wipe any stuff that would one in there so we're not contaminating the oil. Mating surfaces have been, have been clean valve cover, cylinder head where valve cover goes on. Uh, one thing I want to make a note of is just make sure you keep track of these valve tips. It's you know probably a weird tip for it. Uh, they're easy to fall off when you turn it upside down. And then all these surfaces have been cleaned. So I'll get the gaskets ready same thing with the cylinder head you got to clean all of it off even in spaces where you know the gasket doesn't sit because there might be debris in there that keeps the cylinder head from pressing out here's the gasket set I opted to get a Briggs and Stratton one um, it looks like the cylinder head in this one there it comes with cylinder head gasket valve cover gaskets it looks like this area is slightly thicker straighten that out there this area is slightly thicker you know where the where the new surface where that where it blew the, the gasket before The gasket kit also comes with a intake valve seal. Would, if you do decide to change the valve seal, I wouldn't bother changing it if you're, you know, if you're not using oil other than from the head gasket blown. I mean, mine wasn't using oil until it blew the head gasket, so I don't really need to change it. I'm just changing it to demonstrate how to change it. Um, just take a socket, put it on here, give it a tap. That'll loosen up the retainer and then uh, use the spring compressor to press it down. And I'll show you all that. But this valve spring compressor goes on the retainer and part of it pushes on the, the valve and it actually locks in place. You can see the little keepers popped right out. So then I'll release the pressure on it and I can pull the spring off everything valve spring removed you can see the the seal right there we can probably just grab it with a uh, like a pliers and twist it and pull up it's just it's just like a slip fit or a tapered fit onto 
uh, the valve guide. To pull the seal off, you just can grab it, you just kind of wiggle and twist. Wiggle and twist. There. That's off. And then I clean up around it, and then you can put the new one on. Guide cleaned off, it's ready to go back on. What I nor or what I'll do here is you can use a, a socket with a 3 8 drive and it just the tip of it fits in there perfectly where it drives on the metal and then you just set it on there and just tap it real lightly until it stops. Alright, done tapping on it. Make sure it's seated down against the aluminum all the way. And then before you put the valve in from the bottom. Just put a little bit of oil in there, or put a little bit of oil on the tip of the valve. Put the valve in, I just wire wheeled the carbon off of it. It just, you know, cleans it up, helps it flow a little bit better. Um, one item to check that you can check is the, you know, the surface where the valve goes against the seat. And you can see that there's kind of like a, a halo or a ring in between it looks like it's sealing fine there's no like burned edges or anything you can always check that there's no symptoms of a leaky intake valve or anything like that but you know it doesn't hurt to check since you already have it out i'm not going to bother pulling the other valve out like i said i didn't have any other symptoms also check the, the valve seat but it looks like it's in pretty good condition so i'm just gonna the tip in there it's got oil on it slide it through just push I went through real pretty easy so then we'll just reassemble everything good method to hold the keepers in place I just put a dab of grease on there now they're held in place otherwise they'll just keep falling into the retainer and you'll keep having to hold them and twist them and whatever but this way then they just fit right in there and uh, stay put it's uh, pressure is released off the valve just take a just give it a good tap to lock it in place and don't forget to put your cap back on now it's ready to go back together all right for reassembly I'm just taking some WD-40 and just spraying it on the clean new surface for the head gasket and then I'll spray it on the head too. That way, when it's uh, torqued on there, it'll spread out real easy. Uh, another item for putting the push rods back in, you can see we got, there's the oil hole in the middle, and then there's the, the top and the bottom push rod. The bottom one is the aluminum one. Make sure you orient them so that they're on the, in the same way they were. You know, this one goes in the top and then I made a, a wire hook. After a couple failed attempts, I reshaped my wire so it kind of holds the push rods from flopping around. They kept dropping off and then they knocked the head gasket off and back and forth. So I'm gonna try it this way. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I got both push rods on the rocker arms, rocker arms straight. You can see that the head gasket is still lined up. I got both um, dowel pins in the spot on the head so now I'm just going to pull out my piece of mechanics wire at the same time and I'll put a little bit of pressure on the head so it keeps the push rods in place. Alright so I just got enough I just hand pressure on it and I'm just checking to make sure everything's in place. That's how it was before. A little bit with all the head bolts in place a couple are just down so I'm just, just bringing them right up to the head not tightening them yet. Now we'll start the torque sequence. Mark the torque sequence right next to the bolts per the service manual and you're supposed to go uh, 
220 inch pounds total, but in th uh, one third increments. So basically like 75, then 150, then 220. First, we're set up for 75 foot pounds. The valve cover gasket. Just gonna put our uh, thin coat of RTV gray on both sides and then put the cover on. And then the gasket's just stuck there with a thin coat, so the valve cover on. Valve cover on, snug, and just bracket for the engine cover goes on. The gasket set came with this gasket for the carburetor but this is like an o-ring style gasket and the o-ring's in really good shape so i just put a little bit of oil on it and i'm just going to reuse it i've had really good luck with that style of gasket and i don't think i'll have any problems carb is on exhaust manifold or muffler extension whatever you want to call it is is on just gotta attach the muffler Obviously, this little bolt that goes down here to attach the muffler bracket. I sprayed some dry lubricant on the flywheel and starter. It was starting to get some surface rust on it because it's been sitting outside for a little while. But, uh, that should uh, dry up and then not be sticky where it attracts dirt. Keep an eye on. Uh, when you're putting the motor cover on, it's this little heat shield or a little shield. Uh, there's a, a portion of the plastic motor cover that actually goes in between that. Yeah, you probably can't see it, but it holds it in place. If this thing's flopping in the breeze when you got the motor cover on, you gotta lift it up and get that slid in on the plastic part so it holds it in place. Other than that, motor cover's in place. I just gotta throw the bolts in and put the air cleaner back on and cover and all that stuff and we'll be set. The oil, the filters, the change, everything's all put back together. Spark plug. It's all ready to roll. It doesn't smoke anymore. done.